Karlak is a powerful tiefling barbarian and potential companion in Baldur's Gate 3. The obvious good choice is to recruit her into your party, but in the spirit of Avocado Diablo, wait, what was it called? Advocatus Diaboli. In the spirit of playing Devil's Advocate, let's explore why you should kill Karlak instead. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make terrible decisions in RPGs. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Baldur's Gate 3 content. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So let's start off by focusing our attention on Will's dilemma, since he's the one who kicks off this whole hit job to begin with. Will was tasked by his devil mistress Mazora to track down and kill Karlak, and depending on how you approach the quest, things will take a very different turn for Will. When confronting Karlak for the first time, we learn the truth that she was escaping her role in the Blood Wars and just wants to live as a free individual. But my man Will ain't buying it and will encourage us to take swift action. So let's see how this plays out. This woman was on the front line. What was that? Evidence. Proof that you're a devil. A gladiator in the Archdevil Zariel's army. I can explain, but it's a whole situation. If you just hear me out- Another vision. Karlak's blade raised, slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Her rage and desperation seep into you. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. She's trying to trick us. Don't believe her lies. You saw the truth. I never wanted to serve Zariel. I was enlisted in her army against my will. Forced to fight, and fight I did. When I saw an opportunity to get away, I took it. Finally home. Or near it, anyway. You served her! That's enough to damn you! It's done, Karlak. By my living soul, you will forever burn! You know, I could have used a friend. Pity that won't be you. We swiftly put Karlak in the dirt and speak to Will afterwards, but it seems Will is harboring some doubts about the whole thing. You can gas him up with the first dialogue option. The devil has fallen. Hells, I should be celebrating, making toasts, roaring in victory. But I can't get the tadpole's visions out of my mind. Tell me we were right to strike Karlak down. I like your conviction. I've slayed myriad devils, each one a threat to Feyrun. I've torn the horns from their heads without a second thought. Why should this time be any different? My prey has fallen. Hail the blade. Hail again, and may our strikes always find their marks. The second and third options produce the same response. Not exactly the words of solace I'd hoped for. Damn it all! I vowed to hunt vicious monsters, not join their ranks. No! Karlak blazed with the fire of Avernus. I saw it. I smelled it. Infernal essence, tip to toe. Tell me we were right to strike Karlak down. I care. Damn it all. I vow to hunt vicious monsters, not join their ranks. Also, I think it's so funny and cringeworthy to just say nothing when Will shouts out, Hail to the blade! Hail the blade. Hmm. Well... Let the silent winds carry word of our conquest. When you return to camp, here's where things get a bit wild. Now, if you saved Karlak, Will gets turned into a hell spawn by Mazora, a gruesome fate for our warlock friend. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment.
What the hells have you done? However, if you killed Karlak instead, then Mazora blesses him with that drip. Specifically, this is the very rare outfit called Infernal Robes, which grants a plus one to armor class, resistance to fire damage, and the level four spell Fire Shield. Plus, just look at the drip, my guy. I might have to wear this swag next time I roll up to Dunkin' for an iced coffee. The item description has some interesting Mazora lore. Presumably, Mazora was not always a sensuous and manipulative benefactor of troubled souls like Will. Negotiating the hierarchies of hell result in changes of form, but was she ever less beautiful, less erudite, less willful? Plus, Mazora is hot as fuck, so I'm inclined to stay on her good side. Oh, you flatterer. Why, if I had a heart, I'm sure it would be skipping. The rest of Will's quest is pretty similar. Will is still contract bound to help Mazora, and she'll reappear later in the game once you're near Moonrise Towers. So ultimately, if you want to prevent Will from turning into a hell spawn and get that awesome outfit, then Karlak needs to die. But maybe Will getting some magical Gucci threads isn't enough to convince you. So what about Karlak's role in the Blood Wars? Yes, she never had a choice in her role and took the first opportunity to run away from that life. So she's basically going for the I was just following orders defense. Well, it didn't work during the Nuremberg trials, homegirl, and it ain't working here either. It's done, Karlak. By my living soul, you will forever burn! Plus, she apparently went on a killing spree after escaping, if this bloke is to be believed. She slaughtered countless refugees fleeing the Absolute. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family without mercy. We were lucky to survive our encounter with her. Believe me, she's no tiefling but a devil. We were lucky to escape. Just yesterday, the devil Karlak slaughtered countless refugees. An entire family met their end at her hands, including a pregnant mother. I'm gonna be real. I don't trust a word this guy says. It really seems like he's just throwing anything at the wall to make Karlak look evil. He's basically like, she slaughtered a village of people, including a pregnant woman, and I think I heard her shouting the N-word. I don't know, dude. If we interrogate him with Karlak at our side, we learn he basically was a hired merc working for Zariel, so he's probably just saying anything to get paid and save his own hide. Plus, I just can't trust a man with a bowl cut. But if we are to believe Anders, then Karlak has certainly committed some terrible acts, even after leaving Zario's army. Some of those actions are self-defense, but were there other unintended casualties as well? If we decide to assassinate Karlak, Anders will reward us with the Sword of Justice. Of course, we can always pry it out of his cold, dead hands, so this outcome isn't unique to eliminating Karlak. From a role-playing standpoint, the most compelling avenues for killing Karlak are evil playthroughs, mercenary playthroughs, and maybe paladins as well. If you want to be an evil character, then slaughtering a tiefling who's just trying to make a life for herself and wants to be left alone is clearly right up that alley. Mercenaries who just look at jobs with a dispassionate approach may also be inclined to finish the deed on behalf of Will or Anders, basically saying, sorry your life's hard, lady, but I'm trying to get paid. And some paladins may look at eliminating a health spawn as an act of good, depending on their viewpoint. But in my own playthrough, I decided to save Karlak because it seemed like the right thing to do. Plus, it's always fun to bring more companions into the fold when you can. But I also had a lot of fun exploring the other side of this quest and coming up with reasons to make it work from a role-playing standpoint. So there you have it. A devil's advocate approach on why you should kill Karlak in Baldur's Gate 3. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Baldur's Gate and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.